Hey everybody, welcome to My Green Pets. I'm William Green. Let's have an update today on the collection. So, just real quick here on the left, Clavia Miniata. Looking very, very lovely in these cold January days. Very welcome splash of color. And over here, Dendrobium Country Girl. She ha She's just so disappointed she didn't get awarded. Her flowers are totally fading and she is wrapping it up I, you know I, these things are advertised as being in bloom for you know three months or so but uh no these were this opened around december 22nd december 23rd and we're about four weeks uh we're getting close we're not even quite four weeks and the flowers are already faded now it is oops now it is in the um you know in the very dry living room and not in the tent so maybe it would have lasted longer in the tent but anyway uh, once all the flowers come off I'll be expecting some new growth to be starting down here and then I will really start uh, I'll put it back in the tent with lots of light warmth water fertilizer and we'll hopefully get multiple nice big canes this year that will set us up for our next bloom all right let's go over to the grow tent and see what's happening in there all right, I just watered so everything's kind of dripping wet right now. Start out with these guys. Here we have Fred Clark Art Desert Davison, awarded last weekend with an award of merit from the AOS. Flowers still looking very, very pretty. And this flower, actually the wrinkly one here, I actually pollinated it. I took uh, pollen from this flower and put it into this one. The flower's wrinkled up and even the stem behind it seems to be changing color. But I don't, I don't know if it actually took or not because the column of the flower is kind of wrinkly. So I don't know, normally the column swells up and gets real big and fat. So. Don't know if that took or not. Still looking very nice. Next to that we have Mormodia Jumbo World. Got an HCC last weekend. And all the flowers on this spike have come off. On the one next to it, still got some flowers on there. And uh, these two got pollinated as well. So the one on the top here, that one is pollinated with the pollen of Desert Davison here. And then the flower on the side that's kind of turned pink there, that is a self. So I took the pollen out of one of the Mormodia flowers and put it into the other one here. So be interesting to see. It, it looks like they are, you know, the stems do look like they're kind of swelling a little bit. So um, we'll see. Uh, another flower that I pollinated a couple months ago, um, this is. Uh, Bobophyllum lovely Elizabeth and the stem leading up to the pollinated flower has turned to just a dry stick and I don't even I don't know if that's supposed to happen or not it looks like looks to me like the stem has actually dried up and that there are no more there's no water or nutrients getting to the getting to the ovary so I don't know if that's supposed to happen or not but uh, the plant might be saying, no, we're not going to do this after all. I don't know. I was hoping to get some seed out of that, but I mean, they need a lot more time to mature than, than what we have right now. And then more seed pods. Uh, we've got three seed pods of Cattleya Rex coming along. These guys have been, they were pollinated in July. There's one there, and then there's two over here. And these won't be ready for another probably six months or so. We've got experience getting seeds out of those last summer. How Bulbophil Mechanolabium is in bloom again. Hello How, long time no see. Not too long, but it's been a while. He's not terribly stinky today. It's good. Temperatures are kind of cooler in the tent, so when it really warms up, that's when he gets really stinky. 
Okay, let's look at the Cattleya seedlings. So I got a whole bunch of Cattleya seedlings sent to me a couple months ago and I've done different things with them. This one, I'm very interested to see what it does. This is a Cattleya Rex seedling. These are white-tailed deer antlers. And uh, if you can see here, there are some nice little root tips growing out on this guy. I think there are at least three there and then on the side there's one down here too. So root tips are a good thing. That means the plant has a chance. I stuck some other ones on there as well just to see what happens. And uh, I think as long as there are as long as they get regular water and they have some roots to work with, they can they can survive. Um, got some more. These are Deliana seedlings here. Deliana aurea. I'm not quite sure what they're supposed to do in terms of as they mature what they're going to look like. Because right now, they're kind of grassy looking. There's some more Delianas here. Some more in here. These little guys are Delianas too. I don't know. I don't know how. I mean, they got nice big fat roots, but I don't. I'm interested to see how they grow. These little guys. These are more Cattleya Rex seedlings. I had them all kind of in a community pot, and I separated them out yesterday. Put them in their own pots. I've decided clay pots are the only way to go. I've got some stuff in plastic pots, but. Clay pots are better. This is Calia Blosfeldiana, a natural hybrid of Rex and Luteola found in Peru. Here's some more. They got nice red coloring on their leaves. That's telling me that they're getting enough light. Should be anyway. And then on to the adult Calias. We got growing season is already kicking off. I'm really surprised how early it is this year. So we've got some new growth. You can see one down there. Uh, there's one back here on this plant as well. You can see it creeping up the side of the pot. Um, I think there was one actually over here that was poking out. Yep. Boom. This guy right here is poking out. So all of these plants, for the most part, all the Rexes are definitely siblings. So. They should kind of do more or less the same thing. I'm really looking at the big plants to see when their um, when their um, growing season starts. When they start, when I start seeing new growth pushing out here, then it's gonna it's really gonna be on. This is the one I really got my eye on. Um, it was in terrible shape last year. It held a seed pod the full year and had no roots but it has really regrown those roots very nicely and um, this was the only growth it was able to make last year you can see it's pretty pretty sad looking but it does have a big fat bulb on it and I'm hoping we will get new growth coming out here and maybe even the, one of the older bulbs will pull it, put out new growth I don't know but I'm looking for this plant to bloom I'm actually looking this one to bloom, that one to bloom. I would love for both of those to bloom. I'm looking for lots of Cattleya Rex blooms this summer. Like, at least four plants and maybe as many as seven or eight plants. That would be awesome. It's, it's, it's about that time. They're, they're putting up really big leaves and I think that the next growth, they could be big enough to bloom. But we'll see. We will see. I got a new orchid in the mail on Friday. This is one I told you about a few weeks ago. I, I had asked this lady for it and she um, she had offered it to me for five years ago and I said, oh no, I don't need any more plants. And then I realized that she was offering me something that is really hard to find. So um, she sent me a big division. Actually, I think there are four different cuttings in here and Believe it or not, they are actually in spike. She sent me an in spike division. So there's one, two, three spikes. And I'm not going to tell you what it is until it blooms. Hopefully it's going to go ahead and bloom out. Of course, I will tell you what it is eventually, but we're going to play the mystery orchid game for a couple weeks at least. Hopefully these will bloom, and then I can tell you what it is when 
it's in bloom, and you'll, you'll understand why I was so happy to get it. What else? In terms of other cat layers, this is Jesse Lee. Jesse Lee's really not doing anything right now, just kind of resting, no new growth, no new roots. This is the Catlea Jose Marti. It has put on tons of leaves since I've got it last year. I got it about a year ago. Um, I really would love to see it put on a mature growth with flowers. This is a pure white Catlea, and it should be stunning whenever it does decide to bloom. It's got really, really great genetics. Bow Bells by Bob Betts. Let's see, anything else? I guess I could talk for a second about the paths. I'm kind of reluctant to because I'm not sure if my paths are 100% happy in these conditions. Um, this one especially, this is my award winner, um, Path Prime Child Apollo. It was awarded in 2016, I believe, and it bloomed for us a couple months ago. It had three nice big flowers on the, on the stem, um, but it does, it is kind of, losing some back growths and, and one of them even kind of looks kind of rotty and that's it's concerning you know because unchecked rot like paths don't rot for no reason you know um, so I've kind of tried to trade up my watering instead of just spraying water on it I'm actually taking it to the sink and flushing it really well because apparently that's what they really need to be happy um, and they can't stand medium that's breaking down, they need fresh medium. So uh, this was just repotted a few months ago. Um, it is over potted, I do realize that the pot is way too big, but it had such a massive root system, it was either cut off the roots or smash them into a pot and I just, I didn't want to break them all into pieces, so I just stuck it in there. And the, I would say the bottom fourth of this pot is granite rock, just big chunks of granite rock like this. So there should be plenty of air. There's holes in the sides. There's holes in the bottom. Hopefully that'll do okay. Uh, let's see. Let's go down and check out layer two down here. Excuse me. Uh, so paths, the path velosum, callosum, Michael Kopowitz, and then Fal Schilderiana. Still chugging along here, putting out a new leaf. Hopefully it will be, it will continue to recover. But again, these paths, I moved them I moved them out of the light, um, out of the direct light, kind of down into more the shadier indirect conditions. We're going to see how they do down here. I'm also going to, uh, I've also stopped just spraying them, and I'm actually taking them to the sink and flushing them out. Um, we're going to see if that makes a big difference every time I water. Uh, the dormant orchids, we've got Dienia ophridis here. Still sound asleep, but I would imagine in February or so we'll start to see the new growth pushing out. And then our Cygnotes One Delight that was massive this year had a beautiful display. It does have a new growth on it. Let me show you down here. And that's coming along quite nicely. I'm surprised there's not more than one, but um, I am very much planning on taking this plant apart into three sections at least and then uh, seeing if anybody wants a piece because it's just too big and I don't need it to be as big as it is. Alright and then oh yeah there's this big phalaenopsis back here. Can I even see it? There it is. And it's got some got a spike on it kind of pushing out some new flowers on it there. is ridiculous. Alright guys, bit of a kind of a random update today but just haven't got in there and looked at everything very closely in a few days so that's where we stand. Thanks a lot for joining me on My Green Pets. I'm William Green and I will see you next time. Happy growing everybody!